Well, hello, beautiful artisans. Welcome back to Check It Out with Carmela T. So today we are on part two of the village, but part two is uh, going to be a clearer, more precise uh, look at uh, the design and layout for Boro inspired for Boro inspired house and um, for a Kawandi inspired house. Because in the first video, some people were telling me there was a band across the uh, video. So I think that's the Wondershare of uh, Philomore band and saying that it's a free app. And but they're covering a lot of the work. I usually buy the app, but they've gone way up in price compared to last year, so I haven't bought it. But what we will do is a different format with this video. We won't do any cuts. We won't do any building. We're just we're just going to um, have this as one clip. So uh, what we'll do is the design and layouts again so you can see them clearly and get a good understanding. That way you can get your design and layouts all done. And then in the next video, we will be sewing. I'll show you how to begin sewing and, um, and I'll show you some complete pieces sewn. And then we'll look closer at the village and talk a little bit more too about Boro um, how I'm going to be using some Boro uh, inspired designs like the stacking and whatnot. But we're going to do um, closer to a traditional uh, Boro inspired design today in Kwandi. So I'm going to put the camera down so you can see. And I've got this on my table. So um, hopefully this is a nice clear picture for you. Um, you should be able to see those pretty good. And um, I have my roses over here. I'm going to be doing bonsai. And I might do a bonsai vlog. I might start a bonsai vlog so you can come along with me on that. That's a highly meditative and beautiful art to learn and to do. And we have a bonsai society here in Vermont. I'm sure every state must have one. So first do the boro. This is the house, of the bottom part of the house. This is the roof. That will be the roof. So um, that's how we're going to begin. Um, and I'm going to turn it around this way. I guess you can see it like that. I usually put it this way and then turn it. I guess I'll have to do that because I'm working on it. So what we're going to do is we're looking with Boro inspired, we're looking at scrap pieces of um, rectangles, squares. You can use long pieces too. And you want them conducive uh, somewhat to the piece you're working on. I mean, you could work with larger pieces. Actually, you could make this like four. You could actually do a Boro piece like this. You could. You could use large pieces like this. Isn't that beautiful, actually? Look at that. I've done pieces like this. Look at that. That's Boro. That's that's beautiful. We could, uh, you know, just work with these larger pieces. Let's just do one, and then we'll we'll take it apart and do with do with the smaller pieces. But um, that's that's just an example. Look how quick that is, too. Look how quick that is. But uh, so that's a Boro. That's a Boro design. I guess this can go either way. So I'm going to take this apart. And I'm going to work with smaller pieces to give you an idea of the stacking that goes on. So, or the, um, the building, the Boro building. So I, I'm starting in the corner, and uh, typically you start in the corner and just go row for row. You do not have to do it like that. You'll see people doing their boro, and they will be going, you know, they'll be deciding, gee, I want to put this one over here before they even finish that row. 
So that can happen like that. And then there's a nice long piece there. And so with Boro, as you're building your piece, you want to focus to help you anyway focus on how to lay your pieces out. Focus on the areas that are that need to be covered. So in your next piece, you could certainly put this here over here. But then you still have all that there. So you could take this and just uh, focus on covering those spaces. And then here's my next space I'm focusing on. Or I could go down here and focus on this space. You want to overlap about an eighth of an inch. I'm going to actually put this one up here. Let's see, I still have my space there. So I could either get a wider piece of fabric or I could get another long piece of fabric and I can get that space covered. So it depends how you want to do that. So I'm going to leave that like that. This way. And as for whether the piece is supposed to be on top or on the bottom, I've seen um, people who have done this forever um, manipulate that the way they want. If they want the piece on the top or the bottom, that's that's uh, up to how you want to design it. And I just love this plaid right there. And these these are coming out almost flush. Like you see here, the edges, but they don't have to. They can be... Um, they can be like, you know, like this, and then you put put your next piece in like that. Okay, so you have some of the fabric up there. That's okay. So I'll leave it like that so you can see how I'm building. I can build upside down. I've done this so many times, and I love to do this. And these, um, your edges here that are crooked like that, that's okay too. That's part of Boro because those are scrap pieces. Those are all scrap pieces. I have a little piece right there. So to just uh, give you a good idea of the concept of Boro, um, we'll find a little piece to cover that because that's... Uh, you would think of it as mending. You think of it, that's the original. That's where it stems from, right? So now that space is covered, and look how cute that is. Now we have this little space. This I don't think is big enough. You want it to be able to overlap. I would say an eighth of an inch is the best, but if it's not an eighth of an inch, um, and it's covering it pretty good, then you'll, you'll know, because when you begin to sew, it will pull, pull away from it if you don't, um, oh, here's a good piece. Okay. So this is complete. That is a boil piece complete. Now here's the roof. So I'm going to put the house over here for a moment. Here's the roof. Now with the roof, as you build your Boro pieces, I want to start with smaller. If it's not flush to the roof, because the roof is a shaped, what you'll do is after you uh, sew them a little bit, you want to make sure they're adhered well. 
and um, then you can trim them or or you can trim them before you sew. I mean, it's really, it's, um, I, I've done it both ways. I'm going to be honest. And um, there's not too much of a difference. The only thing um, you want to watch for is that the fabric is, is that you have enough fabric. So if you, you're clipping it too close and then it pulls here, the easy remedy is to simply, and it's it's showing the base, easy remedy is just to add a piece of fabric on it. And that's simple enough because that's what Boro is. It's, um, it's mending. So this is pretty. This is very pretty. I love that right now. That's just adorable. We can use this piece for bor for Boro. This is fine. The you c even though this is a perfect crazy quilt piece, it is okay for Boro and you will see different shapes and whatnot in Boro because it also is using scraps. I have a beautiful piece here. I love this. I love this piece. It's kind of big. Um, I'm trying to stay with a little bit smaller pieces. Um, I think I'm going to switch that out. I'm I'm just gonna put that on top like that. Put that one back, and I'm gonna actually even move it up because I need that space really covered well. I can put this on top, or I can put it underneath. Now because we have a slant here, as I build, up, I'm going to let some of the fabrics now overlap. I may not worry about putting them flush. These are kind of flush, but if I get a piece of fabric and it overlaps, I mean, it, it goes over the edge there, that's okay. So let's see. That one's going to go over the edge. We got all different types of fabrics here. Here's a good one. Now you see these are going kind of quickly because these are not big pieces. Um, and actually, uh, when you work with a quilt, you're doing a quilt size. Um, I think, in my opinion, it goes quickly. The, the thing that takes time is the sewing. That will take time. And the reason is, now I just wanted to show you what I did there. Um, I'm starting this next row. I see this space and that space, and I want those covered. So I'm going to go like that. And I am skipping rows, but that's okay. With boiler building, um, you can. You can do that and not mess up the method. Um, and remember, this is inspired by authentic boro. And authentic boro is, uh, was done hundreds of years ago out of necessity, where uh, scraps were used to mend coats, blankets, um, you know, all kinds of uh, clothing so they could keep warm in the winter. Okay, this one I am going to cut because I'm going to put this on the edge. Okay, so that is uh, the roof. Look how adorable that is. That's Boro. Um, so let's piece those together and 
just keep this is kind of a bigger roof I made here, but I might overlap that roof like that. So hopefully you can see that. That's really cutesy. That's the roof. So this will be trimmed so the roof will be more defined when we're done with that. So that is Boro. And uh so now we're going to do Kawandi. And I'm going to hopefully I have enough pieces. Um I should because I've I I made these before. <laughs> But if we don't, guess what? We can always uh, dismantle one of these and borrow. Okay, so with Kwandi, I kind of like to put this like this. And, of course, the, the roof won't fit well if I do that. But we'll do Kwandi like this. With Kwandi, we start in the upper left corner, and we simply go around whatever shape you're working with. So this is a rectangle shape. And the sizes of the um, fabrics do not have to be the same. Now, in part one, I was trying to find more of the oblong um, like this. And I think I even actually started with that one. Um, and I was trying to show you as we go around... Because I want to show you a more definitive, um, I want to give you more of a visual. But if, if you use different sizes, the trick is to just keep track of your rows. Stay in your row. So uh, let's see here. We can find some different sizes. This is a different size. See how much that jets in? So you can see already when we come to row two that that will have uh, taken up row two, that this is still part of row one. So uh, we may just stay with row two, put a piece there, and keep going. So we'll, I'll show you that. Or maybe we'll use this one so it's not so obscure. We'll use this one. That way you can see it a little bit better. This is too big. For, for you learning, it's too big. Okay, now. Now we're starting down the bottom. Now I keep the piece that I'm working on for the first row. I keep it just like this. And um, and then when I start my second row, or my third row, or when I feel like it's getting a little, for lack of a better description, I want to say a little busy, then I start turning these so I can work on the row um, facing me. And that just makes it a little bit easier. So let's see here. Now, again, because these pieces are not huge, this is going to go fairly quickly. Now, we're going to start our second row right here. So, and we're going to overlap just like we do in Boro. We're going to overlap. So, when we sew, we do our visible stitching or whatever kind of stitching you're choosing. Um, when you do that, then it won't pull. Let's see, here's a good piece. It's a nice little piece right there. And that's going to leave a space. It's going to leave a space there. We want to cover that. And this is where it might get a little busy. I'm going to put that piece there. Okay, now this is the second row at the top. Now I'm working on the second row on the side. So I'm going to turn it like that. 
And that way I can continue and see where I'm at clearly. And the pieces can go vertical, they can go horizontal. It doesn't matter as long as you're staying in your uh, shape there. Let's see here. This is a good piece. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, that is... That is so close to the denim. I almost thought that was the denim. Okay, so we'll put this here. Okay, that's my second row on this side. Now I'm turning it. I need my second row on the bottom. So I'm going to put this here. That's my second row on the bottom. This is slipping on me here. This is why I'm usually patting down the fabric. It helps it stay in place until you pin it pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to turn it this way, and we're working on our second row on this side. So this is Kawandi. Kawandi comes to a little bunch in the middle of the piece when it's complete. Let's see, we we'll use this piece. And we have a little space here. We want to focus on that. And now I'm working on my third row going this way. Okay, and I am going to see if I can get a piece that fits nicely right there. That's good. So now I'm turning this way, and I'm continuing to work on my one, two, third row going this way. I only have two spaces left here, right here. So um. I'm going to take two pieces, a couple of pieces of fabric that I believe will fit nicely. And let's see if I can find another piece. Here we go. This is kind of big for that. Here we go. Okay. So this is Kawandi. We've gone all the way around to we go to the center. We stayed in our pattern of a rectangle. We use different shapes of our fabrics. So let's do the roof for the Kawandi. This is um, this is triangle, and we're going to do the same thing. We'll start as best we can from left to right. Whoops. Got a lot of threads there. Now, you know, we could, and what might be really fun is to work with tiny little pieces to make the roof. So we start like that, and then we go around. So let's see how many small pieces we can work with. I may have to cut some down here. Let's see how far we get. So we're going around the, the triangle. Now this here, what we're going to have to do here is trim this after, later. We will trim that. But for now, we're just focusing on staying in our pattern here for Kawandi. So, we'll do that. Overlapping our pieces as we go. We have a tiny little piece showing there. Whoops. 
Let's pull these up. These are not on the fabric. There we go. That might make a little difference in this. Yeah. There's still a little piece showing there. So maybe we use a little bit longer piece. I'm going to have to actually clip this because it's too long. There we go. Now you could leave it, you could leave it very long if you want to. Okay, and we'll use this one coming up. And we can just trim that. That's fine. It's a little bit thicker piece. It's a little bit bigger piece. Okay, so we did our first row going around, and now we're going to start our second row going around. And I'm kind of running out a little piece. Oh, here's a little piece. So we'll use this. And this one, this gives you an idea at your second row. your second row and now we're going to start the second row coming this way and it's okay that you have all different shapes that's fine you just focus on your spaces that you're covering This one, I'm going to cut a little piece here. And if you lose your, like, walk away from it, you need to take a break, and you lose where you were, just continue, just as best you can, count the, the rows. One, two, you see here, one, one, two, but there was one there, one, two, one, two three and uh, then you can figure out because if you if or put a pin where where you left off because if you do lose your your spacing and you have a lot of space left like you're working on a quilt it could come out very crooked uh, like you could start on the wrong side this and that so I've done it I've done it when I was learning some time ago and I learned all those little tricks. So that's why I'm helping you now. Because I think this is such a beautiful art. And it uses scrap fabrics. Okay, so now we're going down this way. And this this is um needs to be ironed. So let me pull a piece of fabric that Maybe we'll, that will go nicely there. And now we have just this little space here. Now you're saying, well, gee, why didn't you just like put one big piece there? And you could have, you could have done that. We could have done that. There's, you know, when you get to that point where you have just that left. So that is Kawandi. So let's put our little Kawandi house together. And that's super cute. And the roof will be more defined when we cut that and sew. So there you go. So um, now I hope that that helps. Let me know. Let me know if there's still questions because there could be. There could be a lot of questions with this. And that's not unusual at all. So especially when you start sewing, you may come up with more questions. Um, but anyway, I hope that that helps. And we will get to part three in the next day or so. And you have a beautiful, beautiful day.